You're making headlines because you say that Trump is the biggest risk to the oh. global economy. Uh, uh -huh. If he gets a second term, then that risk will persist. That's one scenario, right? The other scenario is if he gets reelected, he'll uh, be more sensible and uh, do this thing, uh, do, find the, the right solution, and that's the problem is solved, right? But, but that's, that's the other risk. The, uh, he will, this problem will persist after getting a second term because they'll say, look, I was voted because of, of my position. So, so let's see. So <laughs> it, it could get worse from here. Is that what you're saying? It could, it could get worse. Is there consensus when central bankers meet that Trump mm. is the biggest risk? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in, our, in our case, uh, I'd like to point out that our monetary easing is a, a different nature from what's happening globally. Because we increase the, my, my, my predecessor increased the policy rate by 175 basis points last year uh, to meet the, uh, to, you know, to address the uh, elevated inflation. Inflation reached 6.7% last year. And so now inflation is back to 1.7. That's, that's a sharp decline. And uh, our estimate is that uh, maybe by our inflation last September will be about 1.4. So that's the nature of our monetary issue. We have more space. We want to normalize as soon as possible from the, from the 1.75 increase last year. Can I read into that? Does that mean we can expect uh -huh. a further 25 basis point cut next week? I mean, you've there, already some, promised this before yeah. or by November. Uh -huh. Can we expect it next week? Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> that's, that's the, not good the, enough. The, the, the decision is not mine alone. There is a seven-man board, and we discuss, debate, and look at the data. But inflation is the overriding factor. That will of decide. Of course, of course. There are other factors, like what's happening globally. Those are of secondary importance. It's really inflation that makes a difference in our decision next week. We saw how oil prices spiked, and oil prices are pretty mm. volatile right mm -hmm. now. How does that play out uh, in your decision? Yeah, I asked my staff to uh, review the situation, and the analysis is that if the uh, price reaches as high as $90 per barrel, we're still okay. We'll still be within our inflation target of 3%, plus or minus 1%. So that's 2 to 4. So, But at the same time, we have a, a recently passed law which says that in the event of a oil price increase, persistent three months of $80 per barrel, we can cut the tax on oil. So we're okay. We're, we're prepared for that. So pretty comfortable. How does that translate to in terms of your growth projection for the year? Our growth projection this year is, uh, well, as you know, the first half was 5.5 because of some delay in the budget. Uh, but there's a cuts-up plan, and we are optimistic that we'll still hit 6% this year, and maybe 6.5 to 7.5 next year. Uh, you, what's the biggest risk to that projection? Uh, right now, I don't see any, any risk. Uh, you've also talked about a 100 basis point cut in the RRR, the triple R. Could you yeah. shed some light on the pace of that cut? How will you be doing that? The, uh, the RRR, the reserve requirement ratio, was 20% before before, and then it was cut by my predecessor to 18. Now, when I came in, I promised a 200 basis point cut over a period of three months. So, so 100 basis points, 50-50. So we're looking at another 100 basis points. Uh, it could come in uh, as soon as possible. It could be coming on next month or November. But I, I made a promise. Uh, this, is, this is part of our the new central bank, right? We want to be transparent, and we want to uh, to notify the the, uh, the industry of what we're doing, right? Ahead of time, uh, my plan is to reduce the reserve requirement ratio to single digit by 2023. That's the end of my term. All right. In terms of where the peso is right now, are you mm. comfortable with the? Level of the peso and the movement of the peso. Yes, very comfortable. Uh, we, as you know, we have a floating exchange rate to allow the the uh, peso to be determined by market, uh, by supply and demand conditions. We only intervene if there's a sharp increase or decrease 
to, to uh, smoothen the uh, fluctuations. So we, we haven't intervened for a long, long time, and, uh, and we're com very comfortable. Plus, you know, we have right now, this is, uh, we have the highest gross international reserves ever, 86 billion. Okay? That's equivalent to 7.5 months of imports requirement. The rule of thumb is uh, three is good enough. So we have 7.5. We've seen how emerging market currencies like uh -huh. the peso, like the rupiah, like uh -huh. the Indian rupee yeah. are pretty susceptible to the movements of the yuan. Yeah. And given that the yuan devaluation has been pretty stable and pretty right. gradual, mm -hmm. I mean, do you see any risks to the emerging market currencies? No, uh, the peso is, is, is actually uh, the second most appreciated currency among, among, the, uh, among the countries in, in this part of the world. Okay? Next to Thai, of course, Thai has appreciated so much. So the uh, behavior of the yuan doesn't bother us too. Uh, in fact, we have an arrangement with, uh, with China so that there can be direct uh, transactions between yuan and peso. So we'll, we don't have to rely on, a, on the dollar. And we're doing the same thing for Japan. Okay? Uh, Governor, just one final question. I mean, uh, we're seeing how trade negotiations will resume in the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, how optimistic are you that a deal can come through? Well, there, is, uh, there are discussions, and uh, I think they may come up with uh, an agreement. But uh, I think what is important is the nature of the agreement. Is it a substantial agreement or just to a simple agreement so that it could be used as a, maybe uh, for political purposes? Plus, you know, after what has been done, it will take a while to unwind uh, all these tax cuts, etc. There are now some movements, both in China and the U.S., for, for their behavior, right? Uh, we don't know. Uh, it, it could take about it. Even if there's a decision in November, it will take a while before they can unwind the process.